Today is the second sitting in the month, which means we have the Premier's questions. And just for a, particularly our listening audience, the Premier's question time, questions may be put to, Premier, to the Premier re relative to current matters of national importance and or general performance of government ministries and government agencies, including routine questions about the, ministers, the Premier's uh, eng engagements. The Leader of the Opposition will have the opportunity to ask three questions if he desires. Other members may put one question only, and supplementary questions can un only be asked by the member who put the question. Premier, the first member who has indicated they have a question for you this morning is the Leader of the Opposition. And as you know, there's a 30-minute timeline for this section in our agenda. Opposition Leader. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Good morning also. Good morning. Everyone. Uh, yes, question for the Premier. Um, where are we uh, concerning the um, DCFS, Department of Child and Family Services, uh, with the report that was due on October the 31st, gone uh, on allegations of abuse within Child and Family Services? Thank you, Member. Premier. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in response to the Leader of the Opposition, at the request of the Department and Ministry, the Head of the Public Service placed officers on administrative leave. Um, in other cases, the, uh, the Acting Department Head relieved certain officers of their particular duties. There are three officers being, investigating, being investigated, and the investigations are at various stages. All complaints related to all matters at the Department of Child and Family Services are being investigated. Procedures for the handling of cases of alleged gross misconduct are set out in the second schedule of the Public Service Commission regulations, and upon the completion of the investigations, wherein offenses against the conditions of employment and code of conduct are alleged, the matters will be referred to the head of the Public Service, who shall conduct a hearing. It should be noted that investigations into various matters at DCFS are ongoing, and as has been in the public domain, there are two separate lines one with the Department of Internal Audit, and one with the Ministry itself handling items which may be considered against the code of in the conditions of employment and code of conduct. Thank you. Uh, supplementary or third, second question? No, supplementary. Supplementary? Yeah. You? Uh, and I'm going to thank the Premier for that uh, since we hadn't heard anything since October 31st. Um, I guess what I wanted to find out a little more, if he could expound on some of the other tangible measures outside of uh, suspensions that may have been made to um, by the department uh, since it has moved uh, under the AG uh, chambers, uh, whereby uh, it has uh, given some assurances to families that kids are, are safe and secure outside of these suspensions. Has there been any other kinds of uh, fundamental changes within how they do things? Thank you. Premier? Uh, I thank the uh, opposition leader for his question, Mr. Speaker. And what I can say is that this government uh, puts the safety of our children and regards it as the highest priority. The fact is that the minister who is responsible for this um, responsibility sits in another place. The minister who is responsible for this has made statements on what is going on in child and family services and has provided numerous questions and responses to the members of the other place or the members of the opposition who sit in the other place. What I would say is that the minister uh, who is responsible, just like the minister who was responsible previously, is on the case. We are making sure that we are going to upgrade the facilities. There are various facility upgrades which are going on right now to make sure that there is capacity to care for our children, and this government will make the investments which are necessary and required to ensure that our children come first and that the, child, that the safety of those that are most vulnerable in our population have the services of which they need. Thank you. Supplementary, new question. Yes, supplementary. Second supplementary, uh, yeah. last supplementary on that question. Yes, taking that into consideration, um, there's been a lot of attention to this uh, particular uh, department, as we can see played out in the, in the public. And so I guess what I was trying to understand as far as there's been talk about efficiencies, um, making it more efficient, um, knowing that the AG Chambers has been under stress already, uh, by moving it into this area, um, does the, does the Premier believe that with the attention thus far uh, that it may have been a mistake of moving it, uh, disbanding uh, the former ministry uh, and moving this particular department to the AG's chambers uh, when we know that the former minister was doing such a good job? 
Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the organization of government under the Constitution lies with me, and I am responsible for the organization of government. After 16 months of examining the way in which things stood, I decided to make a change in the interest of efficiency and better service. The changes which I, do, which I have made, Mr. Speaker, in my belief will better serve the people of this country, our children, our seniors, those on financial assistance, those in sports, and those within labor. And so for that particular instance, Mr. Speaker, I support clearly the decisions which we've made. And not only is that do supporting the decisions of which have been made, but it is my belief that it will yield to better results for our students. So to answer the question, no, I am not second guessing my decision, opposition leader. It was the correct decision and it will yield better results for our children. Thank you, Premier. Now, you're used to supplementaries on your first one. Would yes. you like to put a second question? Second question. Second question. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for obliging me. Uh, certainly since uh, the process that, uh, of setting up Sandbox that introduces the regulatory testing environment, which we are now calling Sandbox, I wanted to find out if the Premier can let us know since July, I believe it was first, how many temporary Sandbox licenses have been approved? Thank you. Premier? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if he's speaking about the insurance regulatory sandbox, yes. that is a matter that will fall underneath the Bermuda Monetary Authority. I do believe that they publish all licenses which are issued on their website, and those particular matters will be in the public domain. However, I will um, ask uh, my colleague, the Minister of Finance, to follow up and provide an answer to the Honorable um, Opposition Leader on that particular point. Thank you, Premier. Supplementary or Supp a Supp supplementary? Uh, supplementary. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, we were looking for it and I couldn't find it, so that's why we're asking the question. Um, in the supplementary to that, um, uh, is he aware of any jobs that may have resulted from um, <clears throat> job creation for Bermudians, resulted from these temporary licenses that may have been given? Thank you. Premier? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want to ask the opposition leader to clarify. Are you talking about uh, licenses from the under the Insurance Act for provisional licenses for insurance companies? Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I cannot necessarily speak uh, to the specifics of any jobs which may or may not have been created. Um, as the opposition leader would know, those are not statistics which are kept specifically by the government in any way, shape, or form. What I can tell the opposition leader, and I think that many people have seen, is that jobs are being created inside of the fintech industry broadly, and this government will continue to support that. Thank you. Supplementary or third question? Third question. Third question. Yes. Uh, thank you again. Um, since the um, um, establishment of the FinTech Fund. Have any donations come in yet for the FinTech Fund? Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I confirm that to date there has been no donations made to the FinTech Development Fund. Thank you. Supplementary or? Supplementary. Supplementary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, considering this is that. This is first supplementary on this third question. My third question. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll be done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, uh, supplementary, um, taking that into consideration, um, is there any particular reason why the, that hasn't happened thus far? We know that you've been very attentive to the fintech industry and moving it along. Uh, has there been a complication uh, as to why we have not seen any funds thus far, especially knowing that there have been 44 fintech type companies that have licensed in Bermuda thus far? Thank you. Minister? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Premier? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Opposition Leader said 44 companies. I'd like to correct him and to state that the latest figures state that there are 52 companies now, fintech companies, which are now licensed, or sorry, which have now registered in Bermuda. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, but I think that it is a very, very important point that the Honorable Member raises. And I want to take this opportunity to make sure that I speak to the people of Bermuda on this because it is very, very important to note. Here's what I will tell you. The first thing is, Mr. Speaker, mm -hmm. Rome was not built in a day, and neither will Bermuda's fintech industry be built in a day. But what I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, is yes, there are complications. And the complications that we have have been explained on numerous times from this floor, and those are the complications of banking within this particular sector, Mr. Speaker. So the government, the Minister of Finance, the Bermuda Monitor Authority, ourselves from responsible for ICT innovation and policy are pushing forward in trying to get banking solutions for persons that will bank fintech companies. 
Once there are banking solutions for fintech companies here, we will see even more growth. And at that point in time, I will be happy to hopefully report on donations to the fintech fund. The truth of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, is that this industry will not be able to flourish as others have because of the fact of the lack of banking services. And Bermuda, in this case, is at a disadvantage. Historically, Mr. Speaker, Bermuda was never a banking jurisdiction. Therefore, other jurisdictions which are involved in fintech have many types of banks. Some are willing to have fintech appetites. I had a conversation uh, this week when I was at MIT, when I was meeting with fintech leaders, and one of the things that happened earlier this week, Mr. Speaker, which I think is very important, is there was a fintech company which has set up here. And the company which has set up here, Mr. Speaker, very, very key point. The company that's set up here took six months and was not able to open a bank account in Bermuda and had to open up a bank account in the Bahamas. That is what the challenge that we're facing. I'm happy the opposition leader asked for the challenge. That is a challenge that we have, and we are working to resolve that. It is my hope, Mr. Speaker, that that particular challenge will be resolved shortly. Thank you. Premier, that brings... Would you rise and fall, sir? Wait, 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 wait. No supplementary. You can't ask. No, no, no. Um, I have a list. A list was submitted. I'm going by the order of list that members submitted to me. The next member who submitted a list, the next member who submitted the interest in action question is the member from Constituency 19. Member, would you like to put your question? I did stand up. Mr. Speaker, um, through you to the Premier. Mr. Premier, would, would you please advise whether you intend to continue having the Honorable Wayne Ferbert act as a junior finance minister in the House now that Minister Dickinson has taken up his portfolio as, as, of Minister of Finance duties, or will he stand down as a cost-cutting measure? Good. Good. Thank you, Member. Premier? <laughs> I thank the Honorable Opposition Leader for her uh, question. The last time I checked that appointments to ministers and junior ministers were in the specific purview of myself underneath the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Wayne Ferber will continue to serve in the Ministry of Finance, as I stated in Government House, to assist the preparation of this year's budget. We do know that there is a lot of work that has to happen in that, and the continuity that will be provided in the Ministry of Finance by the junior minister, I'm sure, will be welcomed not only by the Minister of Finance, but by all members of this House. Thank you. Premier, you are allowed supplementary. Would you like a supplementary? Yes, please, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, my supplementary to the minister is that I understand that he, the Premier, I understand that he has all of this discretion available to him. I was just curious because I believe that, you know, that Minister, Junior Minister Ferbert had demonstrated um, some successful completion of tasks, and I wondered whether that might have elevated him to be considered to be the to to be the, to members, be members. to be the minister responsible for education, and I just want to recognizing that there is some concern. There is some concern about education, and and the public needs some assurance that that this important ministry is going to have have the promises that it made to the people taken care of. You, you it, that, that should have been a question. I have a question. Hey, I, I, my my question was. Whether the minister, whether the premier, whether the has, whether the premier has considered that the junior minister, that the junior minister, by virtue of what he's done with with the um, tax reform subcommittee, etc., that his excuse me, members, members, I'm trying to hear the question. Has the premier considered whether junior minister Wayne Ferbert's next next task would be taking over the portfolio of education, recognizing that this is a, this is a portfolio that the people we, we of got, Bermuda we, want to see, we, we, that the people, I got the gist, I got the they gist. Want, they Premier? want it handled. Premier? Pre Premier? Let the Premier respond. Let the Premier respond, please. Mr. Speaker. Yes? I appreciate the uh, support that honorable members on that side have for the members on this side and the willing and the kudos which they will give them. 
And so I want to appreciate that because I think that's wonderful coming from the former opposition leader, recognizing the strength and depth and talent on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. What I will, what I, what I will say, Mr. Speaker, yes. is that the honorable minister responsible for education has my full and unequivocal support to deliver for the people of this country the reforms which are required from education. And what I will say, Mr. Speaker, is that if at any point in time there will be any type of change in that, this honorable house will know. Thank you. That was your uh, questions. The next member on the order paper who has indicated I'd like to put a question is from the member from Constituency 23, I'm a member, would you like to put your question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning, Mr. Premier. Is the Premier able to share with this Honorable House the circumstances behind the sudden separation of the CEO from the Bermuda Health Council? Mr. Premier? Can the Honorable Member please repeat her question? Member, would you repeat your question? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Is the Premier able to share with this Honorable House the circumstances behind the sudden separation from, of the CEO from the Bermuda Health Mr. Council? Uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are no further details of which I can share at this point in time. If there's a specific question that wants to be asked, I'm happy to answer. It is my understanding that the separation took place uh, by the Bermuda Health Council and their board um, sought approval from the minister, and such approval was granted for such. Thank you. It's a second supplementary. Question, supplementary. supplementary. I mean, supplementary. I have one no question. Second I have supplementary. first supplementary, yes. um, and that is, um, can the premier undertake to advise this honourable house the conditions, the, the terms of the separation package that may have been offered to the separate uh, under the separation agreement? Thank you, Minister, Premier. Um, Mr. Speaker, the undertaking that I can give this honorable house is that as much as can be disclosed publicly and or privately, I will undertake to do so. Um, and I think that if the person, I, the honorable member who may uh, speak uh, for uh, health in this matter wants to have a private conversation with the Minister of Health on this matter, I would invite her to certainly do so. Thank you. Second supplementary. Second supplementary. Is there a contingent liability for any legal fees in respect of any possible challenge as a result of the separation? Premier. Mr. Speaker, I do believe that there is a, um, a, uh, something regarding standing orders regarding the answer to hypothetical questions, and so I'm going to decline to answer that question. Thank you. Uh, those are your questions answered. I'm asked. The next member on the order who put in a request is that of the Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, would you like to put your question on? Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Premier, I'm pleased to hear the news that the government will sought, has sought to leave to appeal to the Privy Council the decision by the Bermuda Courts to strike down the, this Parliament's will in passing the Domestic Partnership Act. Can the Premier please advise this Honorable House the cost to date for this appeal? Thank you, Premier. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, speaker, and I appreciate the question for, uh, from the Honorable Deputy Speaker uh, because it gives an opportunity to clarify um, information and misinformation which may be inside the public domain where there have been persons that are quoting very large figures uh, for the government regarding the expenses in this particular instance, in this particular case. What I can confirm to the House is that uh, for the original appeal to the Court of Appeal, uh, the cost borne to the public purse was 41,750 pounds which equates to about fifty-two dollars or $53,000, depending on the exchange rate, um, and which, of course, depends on British politics daily. And then the regards for the appeal, uh, the drafting of the grounds of appeal and provisional advice uh, to the Privy Council, uh, that has stands to date, Mr. Speaker, at £11,250. Thank you. So it's supplementary? No? Okay. The next member on the list is the member from Constituency 10. Would you like to put your question? Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, Good morning. colleagues. Mr. Speaker, just for the record, the questions asked to the Honorable Premier in July 13th session still have not been answered. A question for the Honorable Premier in this session in question period. As the Minister of Finance, Premier Byrd, you issued a license under Section 4AA of the Companies Act, which allowed land held by Bermudians, the building known as Victoria Hall at 11 Victoria Street, 
to be sold to Arbitrate. Question to the Honorable Premier. In the application, what was the proposed use of the building? What were the proposed business operations to be housed in the building? And what due diligence, meaning as referenced in your statement of October 31st, passing all financial and background checks was done prior to approving the license and sale? Premier? I thank the Honorable Member for his question. I am uncertain as to whether or not uh, the particular items of which he's asking for are disclosable, specifically the use of the building, uh, the intended use of the building. What I can state is that I cannot recall um, without notice what those specific men's measures were inside of that document, but I will ask the Minister of Finance to forward that if it is able to be disclosed. What I can tell the Honorable Member is, in a broader context of the question to which he asks, about the purchase for the building and the request for the purchase of the building, I will just explain to him the purchase, the process is as follows. Applications are made. There are requests. The applications are vetted by the Registrar of Companies. In addition to the vetting of the Registrar of Companies, the Registrar of Companies seeks the opinion of the Chamber of Commerce and also the Bermuda Business Development Agency in this particular case. What I can state is that the Chamber of Commerce, as I said publicly, was supportive of the purchase of this. The Business Development Agency said that they were generally supportive of it, but they had had some questions. It be, based upon the questions, Mr. Speaker, there was enhanced due diligence that was done, that was requested by myself to at the highest levels, which is uh, what is allowed internally, that those questions went to the Assistant Financial Secretary, the Assistant Financial Secretary went to the Financial Intelligence Agencies and make sure they completed background checks at the International Interpol system uh, for all of the various directors. Those background checks came back with no objection, and given there was no objection from the Registrar of Companies and support by the Chamber of Commerce, the registration was approved by myself as the Minister of Finance. Thank you. Supplementary? Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, but um, just a quick comment. If Bermudian land is sold well, well, to well, a non-Bermudian well, business, let's, let's, let's keep it I don't think there should be anything that is, is kept from the, the public. Keep it a question. Mr. Speaker, supplementary question. The Honorable Premier said in his statement that financial and background checks were done. He just re answered the question by saying they were done by individuals involved. Who are the individuals involved with financial and background checks were done? Premier? Mr. Speaker, I think that there's one thing that the auto members should know is that the ultimate beneficial owners of companies is not something that is publicly disclosable. And I think that is something that is supported from that side of the House and this side of the House. What I can tell, and so I'm certainly not going to use the privilege of Parliament to disclose information that comes to me in confidence out in the public nature, because I think if we start going down that road, then I'm quite certain that there is a whole lot of business inside of this country yeah. that will be challenged. But allow me to speak again for the particular record. There was an application, Mr. Speaker, to purchase property. That application goes through the exact same checks as any other application goes through. It is reviewed by the Registrar of Companies. The Registrar of Companies seeks the advice of the Chamber of Commerce and the Bermuda Business Development Agency. Those reports came back to me. I analyzed those reports. I held the file after it came from the Registrar of Companies for about a month to make sure that additional due diligence was carried out so that we could be completely satisfied, especially in light of the comments and attacks which have come from that particular honorable member. I wanted to be absolutely sure that the government could stand up and say that we have done the checks which are required. We did those checks, we went to enhanced checks, and those enhanced checks came back clear from uh, that level, and therefore I was satisfied that the account could be, uh, sorry, that the approval to purchase the property could be approved. Thank you. This is your second supplement. Yes, Mr. Speaker. If asking questions is an attack, then we live in a different world nowadays, Mr. Speaker. Just, just, um, um, second wait, supplement. Wait, 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 wait. Take your seat. Take your seat. Let me caution all members. It's simply a time for you to get up and ask questions, not a comment. Save that for a motion to adjourn if you want to add to your comments. But when you rise to your feet, put a simple question. Continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Second supplementary. Referring back to the Act, under the section of the Act 4 AA2, if the application is in accordance with the policy approved by the Cabinet, he, being the Minister responsible, if he consents to the application, and then in 4 AA3, it may be subject to certain conditions that the Minister considers appropriate to impose. Has the Honorable Premier in this case 
imposed any restrictions or conditions in this case as is allowed under the Act. Premier. Mr. Speaker, as I do believe that the actual con the uh, license itself is a public document, I will undertake to ask the Minister of Finance to share so you can see the conditions. The conditions are the standard conditions which are attached to all, which I think it's a for a period of five years and has to make sure that um, it's renewed after every five years. But I don't think there are any additional conditions out of the ordinary that are given to any other approval uh, by uh, non-Bermudian uh, companies that are not fully beneficially owned by Bermudians to um, uh, own, uh, sorry, to own property. Thank you, Premier. The next member who's put down, who's on the list, who would like to put a question to you, Premier, is the government whip from Constituency 24. Member, would you like to put your question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Premier would have seen in today's headline that, that states that FinTech company Big Carbon is looking to fill 16 jobs in Bermuda. Does the Honorable Premier agree with me that despite the naysayers in the opposition, which we've heard earlier today, this government's commitment Just put to... Just your question. No, no sidelines. Uh, Just a question. Uh, does the Honorable Premier agree with me that despite the naysayers in the opposition, this government's commitment to diversifying our economy and create jobs is bearing fruit? Premier? Mr. Speaker, I thank the Honorable Member for his question, and I do agree with him that the efforts that this government has been making into diversify our economy are certainly bearing fruit. Um, what I can say, Mr. Speaker, is that I know uh, that there are those that are skeptics. I know that those uh, that will use statements in this House to ask, where are the jobs? Where are the jobs? Where are the jobs? The fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, as I said earlier today, Rome was not built in a day, and neither will this fintech industry be built in a day. I can assure you that Bermuda's insurance industry was not built in a year, and neither will the fintech industry be built in a year. But what I can say is that this government is on the right track, that we're heading in the right direction, and the proof is in the pudding. So, Mr. Speaker, for honorable members on that side who may be curious, they can, like other members of the public, can go on careers.bitcarbon.com and they can see a listing for a possible opening. I will see for they able to apply for 29 jobs that are going to be located in Hamilton, Bermuda, Mr. Speaker. And I had a up and had the opportunity to speak to the CEO yesterday after I saw this application, this advertisement newspaper. I had asked for my office to go ahead and set up a call. I had a conversation with him at 4 p.m. yesterday. He indicated that the first tranche of jobs which were advertised in the newspaper, 16 of them are to be built in the first quarter. Their company is supported by very big Wall Street firms that are backing them. And he'll be traveling to Bermuda on Monday to meet with me, and I'll be happy to welcome him to the island, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Yeah, you have a supplementary? I do have a supplementary. Supplementary. Is the Premier able to share with this Honorable House and the country how many fintech companies have been incorporated here in Bermuda? Um, I think we heard an answer to that just a few minutes ago. Premier. Um, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy that the government whip um, has asked me to clarify because the honorable opposition leader said earlier, and I counted up the number when I received the message from the registrar of companies uh, earlier today, and the number is, as it currently stands right now, 52 incorporated fintech companies in Bermuda, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The, the, the next member that's on the list, the next member who's indicated I'd like to put a question, members. The next member who is on the list this morning would be that of the member from Constituency 11. Would you like to put your question? Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, Bermuda. Honorable Premier, there's some speculation about the amounts paid for consultants for this new bus schedule. Can you clear that up for us, please, sir? I, okay. uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the honorable member for his question. And I think that the question is valid because I do know that, um, and I think that the honorable minister of transport and the former uh, minister, the deputy premier, should be commended uh, for after how many years and how much effort there has been, 17 years of effort, we finally have modifications to Bermuda's bus schedule. And for them, they should be commended. These modifications are to modernize. Thank you. 
these 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 uh, changes to the bus schedule or to modernize our bus schedule are just step one in making sure that we can provide a more reliable um, and responsive bus service. What I can indicate to the honorable member is that over um, over the last sorry I can say in 2017 and 2018 payments to consultants. Uh, from uh, for the bus schedule, and I think the company is called Schedule Master. Premier, Schedule there's one minute left of this section of no questions problem. before we move on to the next qu um, question. Period. Got you. Total twenty five thousand one hundred and fifty six dollars. Wow. Wow. Supplementary. You got less than a minute. Forty eight. Forty seconds. No one wants to put that further question in forty seconds. Okay. Um, that brings us to a close of the premier's question period.